In the world of Subnautica, there's actually not a lot of vehicles available to the public in the original Subnautica game. But thanks to the modding community, they added so many more vehicles available to the public, which I will be showcasing in today's video. Starting off with the prawn suit, it can be used to explore places that are too deep for the Seamoth and too small for the Cyclops. It has a base crush depth of 900 meters and can be upgraded to withstand a maximum depth of actually 1,700 meters. And that makes it one of the most useful deep sea exploration vehicles in the whole game. However, in the areas such as the Blood Kelp Zone and the Underwater Islands, I would recommend using the Cyclops because of the limited mobility that the prawn suit has. The next vehicle in this list is called the Sox Tank, which was made by Sox for One, which is personally one of my most favorite mods in the whole game of Submarine. The link to this mod will be in the description as well as all the other mods that will be showcased throughout the whole video. There is no much to say about this tank except that it is a really fun and crazy vehicle. It can go extremely fast with the boost that is provided, not to mention the fact that it has a grappling hook as well as a ton of torpedoes. Oh and uh, for some reason the light that it has is uh, really really bright. The next vehicle on this list is our beloved Seamoth and uh, there's not really much to say about this vehicle except it has a lot of mobility and is pretty fast. It also has a base crush depth of 200 meters and a maximum crush depth of 900 meters. And now the next vehicle right here is called Atrama and actually it's still in early access and it doesn't really have a lot of like designs on the inside. It kind of actually even reminds me of like those spaceships that they had in Star Wars. But yeah, there's not really much to say about it except like it's just still in early access and it's pretty much like the Seamoth. Now the next vehicle on this list is called the Odyssey and Kinda of reminds me of the Ocean Gate submarine, but we're not gonna talk about that. Anyways, it's actually a really cool submarine. It's as fast as the Seamoth, and actually it has a lot of detail on the inside. And personally, I prefer this over the Seamoth because like you could walk around inside it. Like it's like a sea truck, pretty much from below zero. And uh, personally, it developed pretty well from those past years that it was in early access. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now the next vehicle on our list is the Cyclops and there's not really much to say about it except the base crush depth of it is 700 meters and the max crush depth of it is 1700 meters and I would like to add that like the developers of Subnautica added a lot of detail to the Cyclops which I absolutely love. It just goes to show how much like the developers of Subnautica paid attention to detail let's say. Now the next one, and personally my favorite one, is the DAD Submersible. It reminds me of the Atlas to be fair, but in general it's a massive submarine which I absolutely love. However, there is some like things I would point out here and there, like such as there's only one room, and it, but it has it has a lot of detail in it. But they could have added like at least three more rooms in the submarine itself. and it has many insane features while piloting the actual thing and it actually goes really fast as well there's a stealth mode and uh, there's two modes which help like let's say if you're in a battle against reaper leviathans or ghost leviathans and you're getting attacked you could use those modes to let's say distract them and get away now for the third mode is the holographic decoy mode and like genuinely it is sick like I didn't expect it to be that good and I have to give props to the modding team that sucks for one hat and yeah it's just absolutely amazing in my opinion. Now for the final vehicle is the Sea Voyager Mark II and personally this is one of the most fun vehicles to have in survival because you can't really break it, it can only run out of power and it actually has solar panels like on the roof so it can recharge at day and you don't really have to put in new batteries but in general there's like these two thingies that you can attach CMOTs to I don't really see why you would need it but yeah either way it's really good issue for now and here we go like a lounge area you know you could put a chair here and like drift off into the horizon I love the detail that they added to the whole map of Subnautica, which is like actually insane. I really really like that and also even the solar map and they added even cameras to the bottom of the ship and you can even like put the ship on autopilot and you can go downstairs 
and you could just look where you're going and it's completely unbreakable and once again it goes extremely fast so nothing can really catch you thank you guys so much for watching this video i really hope you enjoyed it and i'd greatly appreciate it if you subscribe to this channel and like the video so that i know that you enjoyed it and perhaps i'll do similar videos to this one